today's gospel, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I'll tell you a story first. Some years ago at Columbia University, the class of sociology was sent out to one of the poorest areas of the city, New York. And they were asked to the sociology class, and they were asked to take this specific class, interview them, their parents, and tell what their hope for the future would be. So there they were with the poor of the poor. Parents were unemployed, addicts, prostitutes, large numbers living in slum conditions. So invariably, the students wrote, hope for the future, nil. They'll repeat the pattern of their parents. They're carrying burdens which are too heavy to overcome. 25 years later, a new professor was there and he was clearing out the desk of the other guy and he came across a survey. And he said to himself, I wonder if we could track down these students. So he got his class to, and they tracked down the students. They got, found most of them. Yes, some had fallen through the cracks, but there they were. Plumbers, electricians, firemen, teachers. Most of them had done very well. So now they were amazed. What was the reason? So they asked the student, what do you give as a re reason for your success? And they said, we had a special teacher. So now they were curious. We tracked down this teacher. She must know a lot about pedagogy and child psychology. So they tracked her down. There she was now, a woman about 80 years old, little old woman. And they asked her what her secret was. And she said, I'm a Christian woman. I knew that I was the beloved of God. And I tried to love my students and tell them that they had a dignity and worth because they were the beloved of God too. And that has made the difference. We come here today in this couple of days and many times we're speaking about burdens. Yes, burdens you carry. They complain about the lineups for dinner or you can't get service on your iPhone you want. Some may have very serious things they're talking about, burdens they're carrying, illness, family violence, betrayal by friends, gossiped about, hurts that you have received from others that just don't heal. Perhaps there's anger in your heart that won't go away. These are burdens that make life weary and troublesome. And then all of us, too, search for an identity, as we heard many times in the talk. And we ask the question of, who am I? Who am I? Am I what others say I am? I am what the media tells me I am? Shall I look the way? Is that who I am? Is it important the clothes I wear? Do they identify who I am? My family and the home and the place where I live, is that important? Am I what I do? What the things I do, does that make me who I am? You know, because I play football or I'm brighter, does that make me who I am? Because I can sing? Or I am what, what others say I am? I am? Uh, that's who I am? You know, we can define all we have, family, friends, money, the whole thing. Many times people lose these things and are not content with them. And people drift off into you know, strange behavior, looking for friendship in all the wrong places. Oh, we've heard many times pornography, or they, or they drift off into depressions and low self-esteem. Many times we can lose everything, and then what do you have? It asks us to ask, what is important in life? In the last few years, I almost died twice. Once I hit a moose, huh? 
hit a moose on the road and the car flipped several times, boom, 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 and smashed her to smithereens. You know, I ended up, thank God, rescuing me with a broken ankle and dislocated shoulder and you know, shaken up. Two years later, I almost died from carbon monoxide poisoning. The chimney in my house collapsed and I was supposed to go to Mass on New Year's Day at the Basilica in St. John's. I never showed up. They came looking for me. They found me unconscious in the bed, covered in soot. Rushed me to the hospital, and they anointed me. You know, when I was in intensive care, when I came out of intensive care, I can remember when I came out of intensive care. I remember a couple things there. You know, I didn't have a rosy, but I started saying the sorrowful mysteries on my fingers. I asked Mother Mary to help me and hold me as she did her son and rescue me. You know, and, I, and I felt her presence there. But thank God I recovered. Some people would say to me when, you, when I was trying to explain all the things that I was going through and seeing and when I was in that state, they asked me, did I see the light? And I said, no, I went down and felt the heat and I said, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so, and so, But it was a life-changing experience, if you will. It changed my life. A lot of things which I felt were important weren't important anymore. You know? uh, and I begin to think, you know, that I'm God's beloved too. I have burdens of office to carry, but, you know, who am I? How to identify myself? What's important? In the analysis, you know, where saints tell us when we stand before God, all that's important is going to be the quality of our love, our caring. What I want to say to you today is that what the world presents the whole thing is wrong. That is not who you are. That is not who I am. That is what the devil says. And that's what the devil said to Jesus, wasn't it? When he drove them out into the desert, turn these stones into bread and show the world that you can do something. Then he says to him, jump from the temple and people will catch you. And of course, then they'll speak well of you. Kneel in front of me and I will give you a whole lot of possessions. Then you will be loved by everybody and you will know who you are. But Jesus answered, that is a lie. I already know who I am because before the Spirit sent me into the desert to be tempted, the Spirit came upon me and said, you are my beloved child. You are my beloved son. On you my favor rests. In that same Spirit rests in each one of you. You are the chosen son, the chosen daughter. This truth was the basic identity that Jesus clung to as he lived his life in its ups and downs. You know, Jesus' life was difficult too. People praised him. People rejected him. They sang hallelujah, hosanna. They also shouted crucify him. It made no difference. Jesus held on to the core truth. Whatever happens, I am beloved of God, and that is who I am and will always be. And that truth allows me to live the world, to live in a world which keeps rejecting me and praising me and laughing at me and spitting on me. But I am the beloved, not because people say that I am great, but because my Father says that you are forever my beloved. Dear friends, if there is anything I want you to hear this morning, it is that what is said of Jesus is also said of you. You are the beloved daughter, the beloved son of God. That is your core identity, and you must hear this truth not only in your head but in your gut. Hear it so that your whole life can be turned around. You must cling to the truth, the joy, the conviction that you are the beloved sons and daughters of God before, during, and after all of the burdens of life that you carry. 
That is the one unchangeable reality in your lives. No matter what happens, cling to that. Therefore, every time you are tempted to despair because of the problems of life that you are facing, that are thrust upon you, when you become bitter or jealous because of you have, how you have been hurt, when you want to lash out, every time you feel rejected or are rejected, when you're laughed at or made fun of or passed over, Those are hurtful things. They are burdens that weigh us down. But remember, no matter what happens to you, say to yourself, I am the beloved son, the beloved daughter of God. I'll tell you a couple more little stories. I was at St. Pat's nursing home one time where the elderly are, and I was walking down the aisle this dear old lady come up and she put her arms around me and gave me a kiss. And I said to her, do you know who I am? She said, no, I don't know who you are. So, you know, well, Bishop wear this fancy ring, so I took my ring, and because the old people used to kiss them. She said, you know who I am now? No, I don't know who you are. So I jiggled my cross, you know. Figured that might click something with her. You know who I am now? And she says, no, lad, I don't know who you are, but if you ask the nurse at the desk, she'll tell you who you are. <laughs> you know? Who I am is not because I'm a bishop with a ring on and a mitre on my head, and, you know, that, that's not who I am. That's not my identity. That's all just accidental to what I am. The core being is that I am the beloved of God. I've been called to the church to serve God's people. There's another story they tell. A man was in a line up at the airport. There was all sorts of complications. He was very frustrated. You know, and he kept saying, no, I have first class. I've got to be seated right away. Look after me. And he kept after the attendant. And finally he said to the attendant, do you know who I am? The attendant, in a moment of brilliance, picked up the microphone and said, I have a gentleman here at my desk, and he doesn't know who he is. Does anybody in the audience, anybody in the airport can tell him who he is? Please come forward. Huh? <laughs> he was defining himself because of his importance, because he was first class, that his identity was wrapped up. And when all that was taken from him, nobody bothered about that. He lost his self-worth, his value. My dear people, my dear friends, we can laugh at these things, but we cannot get wrapped up in identity and be defined ourselves by who we are. We must realize, no matter what our burdens are, what our position in life is, at the core center of identity is that we are the beloved children of God. We are God's little ones. We are the one of whom the Spirit comes upon. And that is what's most important, to realize that no matter what happens, we are the beloved.